This week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, again, another great guest from the, you know, the chart hitting. This show is just absolutely off the charts. It's, of course, The Expanse, and we've got Sama Salem on the show. Sama, welcome to the show, sir. Thanks, Brian. Thank you for having me. And uh, before we get into the nitty-gritty of the expanse and your your career, uh, like I do with all my guests, I like to check in and just see how the last like eighteen months, two years, nearly, how have you kept you know being positive and keep moving forwards during these obs you know obscure times that we're in yeah. at the moment. Um, you know, it's been I have to say like knock wood, it's been um, I feel like I've, I've been very lucky. Um, don't get me wrong, I had my moments and my hiccups too where I had to adapt and kind of like find ways to stay sane, getting very mm. comfortable with like FaceTime and keeping in touch with people that way. Um, but in the first little while, um, I had booked, like I didn't book work because everything shut down, the industry shut down mm. completely for, for a good chunk of time. Um, so I was like in the thick of it with everybody else and that was kind of brutal. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... As soon as like, as soon as the summer rolled around, they started allowing us to to, to film, and then I had booked a couple jobs um, consecutively. Like when I when the pandemic first hit, I was doing Handmaid's Tale, and then they shut that down, and um, and then when they allowed us to film again, Handmaid's Tale came back, even though everything was still on lockdown. And then I filmed a couple other projects. So, with the exception of like all the restrictions that they had in place on set, I still got to go out. Like I got to go out and be around people and you know what I mean? So it was, um, it was not nearly as bad for me, I think, as it was for most people. And so, mm. I mean, I count my blessings. I mean, we're, um, we're, we're your based. I mean, what has the lockdown uh, restrictions been like? I mean, have they locked down everywhere or are you allowed to go to certain places? So right now, right now we're still, it's still pretty open. Right now, it's like it's still pretty good. You can go anywhere, really, but you just have to. You have we have uh, vaccine passports. Mm -hmm. um, but when there was a chunk of time, I think, uh, around like May or June, where the rest of the world was open and we had shut down because we had opened up too quickly, and then the cases just skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. um, so we were shut down, and the rest it literally felt like the rest of the bloody world was like <laughs> living it up. You know, it was free, and we were still in jail a little bit. But right now, it's um, it's still fairly open. I think. In probably a couple of days they're going to lock down because cases are going pretty nuts here yeah same same here we was expecting um a new lockdown uh for christmas time because the cases here are soaring this this omicron is lit literally uh spreading like wildfire and um you know it is annoying it's getting to the point where i think everyone's tired of these lockdowns but again i suppose it's for the good i mean it's it's i just find it absurd that you know i don't know why they just didn't lock down the whole country for four weeks for four weeks lock us all right. down and then it would have been a lot better instead of just doing bits here here and there but i'm I sure you think they would have learned last time right it feels like like uh, what needs to happen is like a, just like a full-on like nip it in the bud everybody will like grin and bear it for a few weeks and then we can kind of get a better handle on it that's what i think as well but hmm. i mean i mean a lot of biz businesses have gone out of work um a lot a lot of shows had to shut shut down you know production theater i've got a lot of friends in the theater in the west 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 end and and mm -hmm. you know they're finally going back so it, it just i i i know it will come to an end at some point um I just think we need to be positive, and I got my uh, booster jab yesterday. Oh, good! And um, I've had really bad side effects, so oh, I I I have been ill all day today. Um, but you know what? It's better than being it's for the Ill, greater good. Being, you know? I'd rather be sick from a COVID uh, booster jab than be on a, on a respirator. So, totally. so short term loss for long term gain. Hmm. And I'd rather be part of the solution than the problem. So, so uh, Sama, how does someone go from a medical sort of career to being a pilot on the Dewalt on one of the biggest shows on TV? Because I've heard some actors' jour journeys have been incredible, but from a medical profession to, you know, being an actor, I mean, why? 
Why? Why? I mean, well, so I went to I went to school, I went to university, and I got my degree in nursing um, because the plan was to go into medicine. And a cousin of mine at the time was in med school, and he said, "Go." A lot of the people who have medical backgrounds are having a much easier time in class than I am because he had like a a biosciences degree or something like that. Mm. So I went into nursing, and then as soon as I was in nursing, I knew I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to become a doctor, but I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. Um, so I, I stayed in the program because I thought, honestly speaking, I'm like, well, if I graduate, I'll still, I'll, um, I'll be able to make some good money as a nurse, and then I can figure out what I want to do. Like it was like, I knew it was my plan B from like my first month of university. I knew it's not what I wanted to do, <laughs> um, and <laughs> but I didn't tell my family this because it was their dream for me to, you know, go to med school, be a doctor. Um, and then um, while I was uh, I was studying abroad, I was doing my uh, my final semester of school in Sweden, and I had said to my friends, you know, I want to be an actor in a drunken stupor, <laughs> uh, and they they um, they said uh, they thought I'd be great at it, and so I fucking ran with it, um, and I applied to um, some like little acting school in Vancouver. It wasn't I can't you can't even call it an acting school really. It was like a part time a part time program for like four, six months maybe and uh, it was literally the first thing that popped up when i put acting school <laughs> into my <laughs> into my google browser um so i did that and then um i moved to vancouver as soon as i finished my practicum in sweden and then got my license as a nurse and i was not i didn't know what the hell i was doing i didn't know how to act um when i first started so i was so nursing was kind of like my day job whereas like a lot of people were servers I would um, I would go work graveyards at the hospital or with in certain like clinics or hospices, and um, yeah, I did that until I started kind of um, working full time as an actor. Wow, I mean, how scary must that have been to make that decision to leave such a established career? I suppose to being in a career that's quite unstable at times i mean you're going from one audition to the next you've got a contract for a show and you don't know what's going to come from it i mean i mean how scary is it to be in that position where you're 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 enjoying a show you've got a part on either like the boys or the handmaid's tale and and you know it's going to come to an end i mean have you ever thought about going back to nursing or is that literally your backup plan in case everything just drops out of the way, you know, fails. Oh, my, um, you know, to be honest, all everything that you're saying is very, very like true and valid and it does cross my mind. And I don't think about it too like too much because I try to put it out, out of my mind as soon as I can because this career is so like precarious and um, there is so much uncertainty around it. If you think about it too long, you're gonna, like, you'll go down the rabbit hole and it mm. will just like, mm. it will kill your... Um, enthusiasm like i'm still very much a nerd for acting i freaking love it and there are def- like anything there's like the it's a double-edged sword and I, I don't know it makes me so happy and it's such a beautiful art form but the industry is a bit of a bitch sometimes in the sense that it is so um uncertain you know what i mean mm-hmm. and there's more people mm-hmm. who are gunning for jobs than there are jobs um so yeah i think i just i've gotten really good at like having some faith you know and i'm also i'm careful about who i talk to about my doubts because you know you have those people who can like <laughs> influence you yeah <laughs> and well and just make it make it worse you know what i mean fan mm. the flames of your of your self-doubt and then i have a couple like super close confidants that i go to when i have those self-doubts and they're like no 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 Samer, no 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 keep going keep going you got this you got this so those thoughts definitely do affect me but like not nearly as much as they used to and i found ways to cope with them but you you obviously are very good at what you do you're obviously a very good actor and and to say that you started late it just shows you know your natural ability to to uh play characters on 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 screen i mean for yourself when you say so, you know you have those doubts i mean surely being in one of the biggest shows on tv at the moment it's got to be a bit of a, yeah, I'm actually really good at this. I, I, I think I might stick at this, uh, you know. Has that helped those doubts? 
Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I'm so proud. I'm so, so, so proud to be a part of the show. And I feel like so lucky and I love it so much. Um, and it definitely has. It's like um, you start to build like um, I read this term in a book called identity capital, where mm-hmm. um, um, it's this like social scientist who talks about it, like Benjamin Hardy, his name is. But you have these experiences that that, you know, kind of reinforce your confidence and help build you up and like, oh, you start to believe yourself as the thing you want to be. Mm-hmm. And um a hundred percent, ten times over, the expense has done that for me right now. And it, oh, like, just the fact that it's a good show, the story is amazing, and it's being well received. But also, the people who were involved in the show, like behind the camera, in front of the camera, were just, man, I can't tell you what a positive experience it was, and it was so much fun filming that show. Even the scenes where we're like, fucking devastated, like because of this, because of the story. As soon as they yell cut or whatever, like. We just did. we were like a big happy family. It was so nice. Well, we're going to talk a bit more about the Expanse in a second because it is one of the best shows on T T V um, to to ever grace our screens. You know, from all the details to the storyline to the characters. But when you were starting out, so you moved to Vancouver and you started to take acting classes. I mean, who was the biggest influence in your life? You know, for the industry. You know, to drive you forwards. Hmm. Man, I don't know that I had a like a single like a single person who, I mean, I'd watch, I'd watch certain like certain movies like Sean Penn was a big one for me, and that was when I was really young. Like, it sounds so silly, but I watched I Am Sam, and I was young. Like, this is way before, um, I'd ever like vocalized wanting to be an artist or an actor or whatever, and I'm like, holy smokes, this guy's so good. Holy shit. I watched that and then I watched Mystic River and I'm like, how the fuck is that the same person? <laughs> um, so I'd see, I, I think things like that, um, or any, honestly, anytime if I would like, I was in a very like beginner acting class when I started, but I was very, very hungry. So I'd go audit, I'd go sit in on other acting classes with more advanced actors. And it's one thing to see Sean Penn, who was like leaps and like, he's way ahead of the game, like, way ahead of where I'm at, you know what I mean? Mm. But then when you see somebody who's just a little bit further ahead of you in terms of skill, it's very inspiring because you're like, oh, I can see myself getting there. And then I would just do that a lot. I'd, I'd just sit on a bunch of classes. And um, and anytime I saw somebody do something good in my eyes, I was like, oh, man, yes, okay, keep going, keep going. It's possible, it's possible. Mm. I mean, acting can be such a cutthroat in industry. It really can. I mean, it's filled with a lot of challenges and rejection, especially with all, all auditions and <laughs> not getting the parts. And, you know, now with the pandemic, you've got self tape. So you've got the great opportunity yeah. at always recording your best version of what you want to present on screen. Uh, mm-hmm. which obviously presents a lot of challenges because I, I suppose having an audition in, in front of casting directors and producers, you get that op- opportunity to maybe, you know, change the style of the char- character for the producer uh, and you don't mm-hmm. get a chance with self-tapes, which I can I can imagine is, 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 is quite annoying. But, I mean, how do you, you know, cope with the rejection? Because... Uh, I'm only talking about rejection because, again, you're on one of the biggest TV shows, you know, that's landed landed on our screen. So you obviously are doing very, very well. Uh, but I mean, rejections. I mean, do you just forget and carry on, or do you take it? To um, do I forget? Say that one last. Say that again. Do you do you forget and then carry on to the next next one, or do you actually take it quite personal? Um. I don't think, I think it depends on the audition, obviously, because there's some parts where you're like, oh, I want this so badly. This would be so amazing. Like, <laughs> I love this character so much. Um, and then others are like, I don't give a shit. It just would have been, it would have been a job. Whereas some other mm. ones are like, oh man, this would have just like, even just the audition lit me up. I can only imagine. Um, but no, I think like, because I've been, I was about to say doing it for so long, relative to like a lot of other people maybe not that long but for myself it's been a hot minute you know um and i don't think i would have lasted this long if i took it personally like in the beginning Mm -hmm. it was hard um and sometimes it still is sometimes you're like fuck i wanted that 
and mm. he thought like and I did like and I did a good job, but there's just so much that's out of your control. So these days I'm like most of the time I'm just like, ah, shit, you have to forget about it or it'll drive you nuts. But sometimes it's tough when you get really, really close because there's multiple rounds sometimes of an audition. You're like, oh, okay, 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 okay. And then if you find out you don't get it, that's when it's like, oh, fuck, I need a drink. <laughs> but then but then I suppose, you know, when you get really close, uh, mm -hmm. you're obviously doing something great. And I suppose you're going to be remem remembered for future projects, uh, which I suppose is great. So, uh, oh, yeah. But I mean, as as your approach to auditions changed since you've been in The Boys and The Handmaid's Tale and The Expanse, I mean, are you getting getting treated slightly different because now you're being recognised and now you're on screen a lot more? Totally. I mean, my approach has changed in that I'm no longer trying to get it right so much. Before I used to be like, okay, what do they want me to do? Like, what do they want? Whereas now <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm going to read this thing, and of course you're gonna. I'm going to stay true to what the story is and what the, sh you know what I mean? I'm not going to be a complete, like go like completely out of genre or whatever. Right. But uh, when I first started, I think I would try to really try to get it right or like be the thing. And now I'm like, I'm going to do my, my take on it. Mm. And um, if they like it, they like it. If not, it wasn't meant for me. Mm. Um, and I'm definitely feeling the difference now that I'm like further along in my career, I'm auditioning a lot more for uh, bigger parts, better projects. And it's become, you know, maybe that's what's made like made it all easier is it's become so much more normalized. It's just like a mm. part of my life. Um, whereas like I'll get a couple auditions a week and it's, oh, okay. Time to get to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, auditions, some people say it's an art form in itself, you know, go into these auditions and um, <laughs> Personally, I hate auditions because I used to, I did a degree in performing arts and acting mm -hmm. when I was younger and I was in a few films and, and I've got to say, I, I just hate auditions. I think they're the most nerve wracking thing in, oh my God. I just, yes, I, just I, I just hate <laughs> them. I really do. You know, when you get your sides and you go up and, yeah. and li literally your audition starts the moment you walk into that room or you're lining up with all the other pe pe people you're looking at e each other and eyeing each other up and and out and and i just yeah i just i've got admiration for anyone that is making it in the biz business because oh, it's 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 so tough it really is but let's talk the expanse because all my viewers and lis listeners will know the expanse is is is, is right there uh, i've already had thomas jane on the show where's chatham uh, in in a week and a half i've got uh, nadine nicole on the show oh, as nice. well um so I, and now i've got you which is great uh, funny story actually uh before before we go on i've got thomas jane's number and um <laughs> I, I was at work the other day, and it was only it was only, it was only a couple of days ago. And my Siri automatically turned itself on and started to call him. <laughs> and literally, I looked at it, and I was like, "No, it's going to be like I don't know three o'clock in the morning, and I had to hang up." So ho hopefully, it didn't it didn't go through to Thomas Jane. Um, oh, I hope it did. Oh, don't because <laughs> when I interviewed him, literally, it was before the YouTube channel. Um, so obviously, I've been doing the podcast for about a year and a half it it, yeah. it it gave birth during the pandemic um mm. and um he answered the um uh, facetime uh li li literally with no clothes on he just had a pipe <laughs> and no clothes <laughs> and li literally and then he turned around and said oh is this on camera i went nope <laughs> thank goodness but uh it was a a, a sight indeed but um you joined the show um yes he really is you you joined the show last se season how was it to join such an established cast an amazing cast and, and and crew i mean what what was that like uh i was very nervous i won't lie i was like super super nervous to, to start but i think one of the like the saving grace was first of all my character was attached to Kara G's storyline who plays drummer and she's just so lovely she's mm -hmm. honestly like I couldn't think of a better person to kind of um take me under her wing on a show you know what I mean and also because the um the crew that joins Kara in season five 
there were five more of us. It was me and four others. And they were all new to the show too. So it was, it was nice in the sense that um, we got to be new together. Uh, and mm-hmm. that made it a lot easier for sure. It kind of helped like we had that shared experience to kind of like get our jitters out. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, I was I was uh, re reading up a bit more in depth about the character because we obviously see you as Joe Joseph on 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 screen, the pilot of the Dewalt. Um, but I love this. Um, I I read some some something. It says that on the show you've got three wives and two husbands, and yeah. that just sounds a fantastic situation to be in. It really 100%. does. <laughs> Why not? I mean, um, you know, all the fun and the games. I mean, did you um, watch the show before joining and going for the audition? No, believe it or not. I had no idea. Like, I didn't. I I found out I got the audition. Um, I had no idea what, like, what really, like, the show involved, to be completely honest. I was, like, living under a rock, apparently. Um, but I got the audition, and then I went on YouTube to find uh, to figure out what the... Uh, the belter accent was like so i just saw a clip of kara and i'm like great that's what i went in with and then when i got cast season four what was due out that december i started going back and watching excuse me um so yeah i had no idea what the show was about and then i ordered the books as well and i like tore through the books and um i i couldn't believe how good it was like it mm. flew under my radar so hard, and I think so many other people as well. A lot of my friends hadn't seen it until I um, I was cast in it and told them you have to watch the show. I'm in it, um, but it, it was phenomenal, so good. And what was the audition like? I know we spoke about auditions earlier on. I mean, yeah. what was the experience like auditioning for the experience? <laughs> it was cool. So I had my first audition, and then uh, that was kind of like. It was good. It was. I went in. I did the audition. And it's funny with the uh, with the first round of things. You kind of go in, and it's just like I did my thing, and then um, and then I got a call back, and that was with uh, Breck Eisner, who's the like the longtime director on the show, who's so awesome. Oh, he's man. And yeah, he's so good. He's so so good. I love working with that guy. And then Lou and Webb, who's uh, one of the producers on the show, and I'm like, oh shit, okay. <sighs> now it's like now it's. It's like for real, I got I have a shot. Um, and then I went in, I did it. They had me do it like four or five different ways, sometimes completely um, contradictory. So mm. one with one time they're like, Brett goes, okay, do it slow, like taking the surroundings, yada, yada, yada. And then he goes, um, okay, for this one, the rocket, like the shit's exploding next to you. There's like missiles coming at you. I think they just wanted to like, they wanted to be sure that I could, that one I was directable and that I could, you know, do it any sort of way. And then uh, I heard back a couple of weeks later that I got the part. Well, you must must have been good because if someone asked me to act like those spaceships next to me, you wouldn't have a clue, would you? You were thinking, right, okay, how, how can I relate it to, to, to this in real life? Um, right. but, but the show is so detailed and mm-hmm. it, the sets are just incredible. I mean, what was it like working on those, those, those sets? Because I've got to say, out of any sci-fi series or film... Mm-hmm. That show is 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 so well thought about, and and all the de- details from the gravity to just everything. I mean, what was it like? Because we see this m- piece of magic on screen, but what mm. what is it like actually on the sets? I mean, what are the sets like? Oh, they're incredible. Honestly, I think um, it made our jobs or my job as an actor a lot easier because I didn't have to imagine so much of the stuff. It was all there. Like the, but there was like the buttons on the screens I could interact with or, <laughs> or you can just like the, like because for the gravity, like a lot of the stuff would be like magnetized or you had somebody there just because obviously we were filming in gravity. So you had somebody, um, Oh no, spoiler. <laughs> I know. Right. Oh, shit. We can edit that out. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, you had like, every department was so on the ball and because so many people had been with the show since the beginning uh everybody knew their stuff so good so even if i was like leaning for example in a scene where there was no gravity somebody would somebody would catch me um and in terms of the ships themselves they were so awesome like they did such a good job everything was so felt so real you know i felt like i was Mm. in space 
Mm. And then you talked a moment ago about your accent, your belter accent, which yeah. I've got to say is quite. Um, it sounds like a lot of lot of people that live near me. To be fair, uh, the belter <laughs> accent because they always like belter, belter like that. It's a bit like uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And um, how did you work on that? Because that must have been such a bizarre like sort of accent to work on because it's near enough a made up you know accent i mean how much work actually went into that because it sounds awesome oh thanks man uh i'm lebanese originally um so i kind of borrowed from arabic to kind of like help with a little bit of the sounds there Mm. and then um they had a dialect coach for us who like was like specialized in this belter patois so in season five um we had these dialect sessions where we would come in as a family. So the whole like polyam Belta fam would come in, we'd sit in a boardroom and we'd run our scenes with this dialect coach. And then we had the option as well to work with him independently. So, mm. um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I mean, like, the lang- the language as well, the names that, that, that you come up with for certain, certain things, of which, which I think is also awesome as well. I, re- I remember when the show first came, came out, you know, I would, at work just be saying random like belter like sort of <laughs> slang to see if anyone would pick up on it but no one did uh which is a disappointment but um enough, i mean soon. i mean obviously the show and the cost cost costumes did you keep any memento from the show did you get to oh, keep shit. costume props um i didn't, I didn't take or borrowed more. should i say <laughs> no you know i didn't but I mean, they gave us some pretty awesome swag, like, at the end. It wasn't part of my costume, but they gave us these, like, Grossinante jackets, these, like, bomber jackets nice. were, that, were, that were pretty cool. Um, no, but you know what? Don't take my word for it, but I'm, 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 I feel like they're going to need them again, so. <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? When when I was interviewing Wes, they were um, filming the se- the season that was just, just on, and... Um, I remember he said that um, I couldn't speak about anything about the new season because uh, Am- Am- Amazon had put a, a, like a, an NDA on it, so that took all my question- questions off. But you know, do you do you feel in your heart that we'll ever see the uh, Rossi and 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 the Belters and the Inners and the Earthers and all everyone again? Do you think this is going to be the end? Because they keep saying it is, but. I don't think so, to be honest. But I mean, you have to act like, again, that's just me and my intuition and, and what I think. Mm. But the show's too good. Mm. And too many mm. people like it for it to be the end. So I have a feeling, whether it's sooner or later, that it'll be back. And what was your favorite scene to shoot so far without giving any spoilers away? Mm. So in season five, it was the bubble scene for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think that was episode eight. And then this year, uh, episode four was awesome. I can't wait for people oh. to see it. So we're on episode Soon. two. So we've got to wait yeah. for another week and a half. A couple of weeks. Uh, <laughs> it's up. on New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, it comes out, I think. So New Year's Eve, is it? Yeah. Oh, what? So, I'll, I'll, so I'll send you a message on social media, and you can tell me what you mm, think. After, you know. Yes, I mean, as your friends, uh, I mean, how how tight as has the expanse got you in the way of storyline plots and what happens? I mean, d- d- does your family know? Do your friends know, or have you just kept quiet on the the rest of this season? Um, no, I haven't really told them anything. I I mean, it's helpful that. Um, uh, Kara, Vanessa, and the other members of like the the Polyam Belter fam are like good friends of mine because we can talk about the show together and don't worry. Like, um, but I have a couple other friends who are super into the show and are like, don't tell me anything. I don't want to know. <laughs> I want to. I want to see what happens. Um, so yeah, I don't really. I don't tell anybody anything. I just kind of like, like I just told you, mm. I'm like, for episode four. Episode four is gonna be really good. Episode four it is, and I've got to say the fans are really passionate about the show. I mean, it got mm-hmm. to a point where the the the, the fans um, staged a massive campaign um, when Sci-Fi cancelled the show, which mm-hmm. I thought was ridiculous. And obviously, Am- Am- Amazon picked it up. I mean, since being on the show, have you had any fun encounters with fans? I mean, obviously, I know the pa- the pandemic's been on, and and conventions have have not been really going that much i mean have have you had a really 
funny in, in interaction post or no 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 not yet i mean online maybe <laughs> <laughs> nothing I can remember, but sometimes you just think to yourself the ridiculous things people say. But other than that, it's been just um, just kind of lovely feedback from people. Nothing, nothing oh, crazy. That's good. Yeah. And what have we got to look forward to for um, for your character in the rest rest of this season? I mean, in a nu nutshell, I mean, what can you I say? And what kind? You just get to see what war does to Joseph. Okay. Where like season five, he's very, I feel like he's very soft. He's very sweet. He's like, he just wants to keep the family together. And then you see what the circumstance of war does to somebody, even somebody who's so soft and like loving and whose priority is just like live and let live, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's... Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've, I've got to say, watching the last two episodes... It's made me slightly sla sad to to think this could be the last season because it's something you look forward to every year. The characters are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So mm -hmm. uh, fing fingers crossed we get more of this show. Fingers crossed. Yes. Um, yes. I think everyone just needs to get on social media and uh, back a massive campaign for season seven. That would be awesome. Um, so So looking back over your time, um you know what's been your fondest memories of being on the expanse mm, i think um the dinners that i mean the rap party was really fun last year yeah um, I, do you know what I, I was gonna ask ask about that i mean what goes down at the rap party i mean <laughs> how crazy is it because it's got to be absolutely cra cra crazy I mean, la this year we didn't um, have much of one because it was like a, because of the pandemic. Mm. Um, but last year, after season five, this was before COVID really were like, yeah, I think, it, yeah, it was, wasn't it? It, it must have been. Um, it was wicked. It had a wicked little party. It was like, they they, they, they put on a good show, the the producers. It was a lot of fun. Oh, you you you're not giving anything away. Um, I mean, was there a DJ, a band? Was there karaoke? There was, a, there was a DJ. There was an open bar. There was like some delicious food. It was like it was we, they had it on like the the top floor of like a, of a high rise with like an amazing like 360 view of the city. It was. And the next quest question: Who got drunk the most? <laughs> I think I might have. <laughs> well, the fact that if you can't remember is is a true sign that maybe you had too many rye beaners. Um, so, um, how can uh, talk talking about parties? At actually, I always put this quest question in. What is your go to party party trick? I mean, have you got any party tricks that they? Oh that, my god. Do? Um. No. No, I don't. No. Like quite boring in that way. I mean, I I feed people. That's like my party trick. If like I've always got food on the table, like a charcuterie board, I make sure everybody's glass is like full to the brim. That's probably my party trick. That's awesome. And and how can how can fans follow you? I've 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 put on my notes. How can fans follow you? Obviously on social media, not in person because that's really creepy. Um. So uh, what are your handles on social media? Uh, on Twitter, I am Samer Salem eight, and Instagram at Mister Dot Samer Salem. That's awesome. And what is next for you? What can we see you working on, or is it a case of putting your feet up and relaxing and and riding the waves of uh, the expanse for a while? Um, I'm actually I finished I wrapped a film in the summer called My Fake Boyfriend. That's a, a rom com. That's different than anything I've ever done before. That I'm awesome. Super excited about. Yeah. yeah, starring uh, Keenan Lonsdale, Sarah Highland, and Dylan Sprouse. Um, and then I've got a show coming out in January called Two Sentence Horror Stories that oh, uh, yeah. comes out on CW, I think. That is awesome. Um, yeah. And then um, lastly, I mean, obviously the fans are going to be watching this. Uh, I mean, have you got any message for the fans at the mo moment? Because Chris, Christmas time and the holidays, you know, we are facing a lot of... Um, challenges in in the way of the pan pandemic have you got any words of wis wisdom for the fans mm. out there that may be having a hard time at the mo 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 moment i think oh man i'll tell you what i tell myself is like be kind to yourself and be kind to other people mm. and definitely and, and 
do you know what? I think this pan, pan, pandemic is a giant reset button on humanity. I think it's oh, showing the true tests of what people are about and what they care about. And I think that at the end of this, we'll flourish and, you know, ho- ho- hopefully we'll be more of a caring, you know, world. I mean, it was ama- it was amazing to see. Do you know when we had the massive lockdown, the fact that the rivers in Vienna, you know, the canals went to crystal blue again. And, wow. and you know, the stuff that the envir- environment just, just seemed, seemed to heal itself. So fing- okay. fingers crossed, um, you know, it will fix itself. And what are you doing for the holidays? I'm uh, hanging out in Toronto with some friends. Excellent. And what's Toronto yeah. like? That's on the East Coast, is, 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 isn't it? That's the cold side. Yes, yeah, exactly. Toronto, it's actually kind of like there's a bit of snow on the ground. I think we'll have a right, uh, a white Christmas this year. Um, but it's not so bad. It's it's nice. It's kind of. Like, I was actually in the UK like a month ago. It's kind of like similar. Oh really? To the UK right now. Yeah. Whereabouts in the UK? I was in London for two months. Uh, oh wow, wow. Yeah. Do you know what? I used to work in London. Well, I lived I lived in Kent for ten years, and I worked in Lon- L- London, and. Um, such a great place i miss city life i miss the hustle yeah. and bustle and the bars and the clubs and everything like like that but 100%. hey i'm settled down now i'm going gray and um <laughs> don't look at that and you know what <laughs> since since covid i am losing my hair oh, i know shit. this sounds really weird but i am losing my hair on top and you know my wife thinks thinks it's just age but you know, since COVID, I am literally stress, losing my hair. Stress. It's real. It's real. The last, the last two years have been like an experience, to say the least. It has, hasn't it? But do you know what? If I do lose it, I'm shaving it all off and doing yes. a Bruce Willis. You know what That's I mean? I'm just going to go. go for it. Yeah embrace it but but Sama, thank you so much you've been a great guest and i'm enjoying you on the expanse and i look forward to everything that you do in the future thank you for being on the show awesome. thanks brian